There's a quick little video here to show you how to build and make this small wishing well. We brought it from Aldi and we're just going to show you how to put it together. It's a bit lower than I was expecting, a bit smaller, but it looks nice in the garden. It would have been ideal if it was slightly higher, maybe a foot off the ground. Um, the quality of it's not too great. It was a bit, uh, well it was cheap, it was about 25 30 pounds I think, something like that. So it was cheap, however, is it worth it? Well, we'll find out how long it lasts. It looks the part. So here you can see Wooden Wishing Well Planter from Garden Line, which is an Aldi product. You're going to need a few little things to put it together. And that mainly will be a hammer. I found that handy. Uh, a drill would be good, a little power drill maybe, just for the screws. You could probably do it with a hand screwdriver. These are all the pieces laid out to show you what comes in the box. And without the guide, it seemed quite straightforward. However, the guide is here. It's a one pager. It gives you a rough idea of which order to do things. And yeah, the order it told me to do it in wasn't excellent because the the base plate, the round one, was quite difficult to stretch the the barrel type those things around it. So I used the picture on the box as reference. You get a bag of screws as well. There's a couple of size screws in there that you will need. So what I'll do is I'll position it how I think it would work. I'll show you what I mean by the way they say it, it didn't quite work that way, so I had to do it slightly differently. So these planters have little blocks in the bottom. You want to make sure those little blocks are at the base, because a plate would actually sit on those blocks so it doesn't fall straight through. And these are the side um, raised panels, I'll call them. The arms, as it were, for the wishing well to be, well, the bucket to kind of hold onto with a piece of dowel. So these will go on the sides, and those two side uh, panels will stretch around the circle. Make sure to keep the flat side of these uprights on the bottom and the pointy side facing up as well as the little holes. So here's the screws you get with it. The really small ones are the ones you use to attach the side panels and the other ones are for additional things. I'll show you the roof and adding on that little bit. So the littlest screw is what you need here. There'll be a few of them. And I found it was easier to lay down the piece and join these on. There's a slight bevel on the uprights to allow you to circulate it. You can feel it on here. So make sure that's pointing the right way. Um, kind of, yeah, you can only point one way because the other way it won't be able to circulate. So here I'm putting a single screw in, make sure it's all the way to the bottom flush and use a uh, drill to screw in the pieces. So yeah, we'll drill. I'll drill in one each. You could put two in these, but I'll put one each just to allow me to stretch it and then I'll go back around and secure it. So you can see that here being done and you'll see this kind of flappy barn door type thing so so just working our way around that i'll secure these on you'll see it as it gets put together and these these are like metal strips that are holding the wood together basically so now i'll raise that up and we start spinning this around so the guide says to put the plate in on those little nubbins you'll see in the bottom and then start spinning it you want to basically get a circular motion going on and the base has two wooden bits on the bottom that you want to keep on the bottom so you're putting that in and you're trying to kind of bring it around and then bring the other piece to join it all together. But I found it too tricky like this, so I ended up taking the center piece out, which you'll see in a sec. So here you'll see, I was able to screw one, um, in theory I could have just screwed that on the floor as well, this other bit here. And just left the last bit in to join the whole circle together. But here we're going to put some more screws in there and hold that side in. So the screws are quite small, but that's what they're supplying. And again, it doesn't seem like it's hard wood, it's all soft wood. So it'll be interesting to see if it withstands the test of time. There's a slight liner with it as well that you can put in the lower section. But in the picture they've got on the box, they actually put pots in there. So flowers in pots and then the pots inside this. So it's more of like a, a visual thing. So you can see here, I found it quite hard to get the circular without having a gap. I didn't want a gap in it. So then I ended up taking the centerpiece out and joining it and then separately pushing the centerpiece back in again so that'll be interesting to see you'll see that now see i couldn't really get it in i took the centerpiece out because it kind of gave me the circular feel so i was able to get it into conform to that circle and now we're going to screw in the last couple of screws there and then you'll see how i uh, try to put the centerpiece in then so it's going to basically be a trial and error kind of thing and yeah hopefully this video helps you um, I've done a couple of these different types of things like this and I think I could have probably made this better myself out of wood. 
but obviously it's a quick flat packed thing and it's meant to be easy but yeah so there you can see now we're putting that into the center and then we're going to get a, a, a this is where you need the hammer you just going to tap it into place so you see there i just tapped it down don't be too hard with it it should kind of fit in nicely as you can see and also flip it upside down to see if it's sat down onto those little wood pieces there you go so that's done that for you and uprights are there now i'm just going to go around and put the other screws in that the additional screws were basically so it's two per um it feels like it's just about holding the screws weren't long at all it's probably like a centimeter if that the screw was but yeah same thing on the opposite side we're going to work through and just tighten these up and these should help you get sorted out and looking at that it seems like that's the main bit of it and again the screws are going in and then we're going to turn it upside down and once we turn it upside down that will give you sufficient pieces now that dowel piece will go in which will allow us to uh, hold the pot in now this is the roof section there's a little beam along the top of the roof as well as the two panels which make up the um the roof ceiling whatever you want to call that just work your way around and secure it and i'll show you a few shots in the end of everything coming together so looking at that you can see that's how it feels like it's uh, it looks quite good but again it's all very flimsy and like roughly put together so it might make a good gift idea if you already put it together because it might be quite tricky for someone to put together especially for how it's set up again it's small little screws in the top four of them will fit across and secure it in place and it's a planter so you can put a number of different plants in there something small would probably work best uh, they've got clematis in there i think in the picture i'm thinking of putting nastraniums in the bottom to have them overfill i'm not sure what i'll put in the top pot so for this i had to check the guide is that beam being held in across the side or does it go underneath and the picture actually helped a lot more than the guide did so i looked at the picture on the box and i noticed that that's how it was put into place and there were screws pre-drilled in the bottom where you can just put your longer screws in and this is where your drill come in handy you can just drill them into location so working on that you can see that will hold into place there and that works on both sides and there you go so we're just holding it in place and then all of this will fit onto the two uprights that we put onto the base of the the well the wishing well i think it would have been nice if it's slightly bigger maybe like a half size bigger than what it was they'd be perfect so that's just making sure they're all nice and secure i've gone around and just tightened them up and checked the top as well just to make sure those screws were tight so there that's getting that into place and we seem to be doing okay again there a couple of little screws to hold it in place and a quick look at the guide just to make sure that this all goes on top of the bottom this is the little part now that goes within it and you can tell the attention to detail here because it's quite shabby you'll see they didn't screw in the piece of um well they didn't line up the wood when they put the framing so it's all a bit wonky <clears throat> so all i had to do was just use the floor to tap it into place and kind of uh, persuade it it's probably two centimeters out so yeah you get what you pay for so you can see there i've tried to persuade that into place and again two little screws will hold that together and yeah it's just it would have been nice if it was if it was perfect but obviously it's probably mass produced somewhere and they've not paid attention to when they're putting it together there's a slight bit of um or maybe it's the wood expanding because it could be the wood drying and getting uh, acclimated to different temperatures so you'll see there the little uh, disc pops in the bottom so you can put a pot in the top section as well with the flower in and i just rolled it to get it into place and the dowel piece will be there you can use the dowel just make sure you put that upper section through there so you can actually put it all the way through there so you can see now that's the little uh, the bucket you would say and that dial will fit through the two holes on the uprights so you can see that here if it doesn't fit one way just do the opposite way so you'll see i found it tricky that way but then i just flipped sides and the other side uh, worked well so we're just going to flip it around now and that fits in place and then we're going to put the roof on and that will all hold in place so you can see there it, there's a little handle that comes with this as well so i'll get the handle and attach that in and again i needed to use the hammer for this handle um, because the handle itself needed to be a bit more tight and there's an actual hole on the dowel so make sure you put it on the right side like this and a screw holds it in place 
there just give it a few taps and that should hold it in place just hold and yep there we're getting there so that now works as it would be intended to be and the roof fits on and the slightly bigger bolts with nuts the carriage bolts fit in each side to hold the roof in place so there you can see it's working it's magic we're not quite sure where we're going to put this because it's too low to the ground we might put it on top of the table or the bench or we'll have to find a location for it but it's a nice little thing to have in the garden here's the little uh, carriage bolts and i put them straight through and then use the washer on the inside with the nut and just hand tighten them i didn't tighten them too uh, tight i might go back around and use a, a nut um, spanner and the phillips to tighten it fully but that's something to know and there's two little pieces of dowels that fit into the the main arm that holds the bucket in place just to stop it sliding out and again i use the hammer just tap those into place they should go straight through but that's how it feels there and then the, once the handle is on you can actually use it um, it does work it's not just for show so you can uh, raise it and lower it so the bucket goes up and down and there's me just securing the handle in place and there you go again you could put a little screw in there they have got extra screws that you can put into there and i was left with about two screws which i don't know what to do with i'm assuming they're separate uh, extras they always seem to be extras for whatever reason in case you lose one or something maybe but if you keep them in the bag and you take them out as you need them you should be okay so overall it was okay not excellent i wasn't too happy with it but for what it is i reckon it's a nice little addition to the garden so keep an eye on that and we've got a few more videos coming to see what we end up planting in this but for now that is our small wishing well that's the little plastic liner that they give you with it it's basically a bag and you put it in the lower section you can either fill it with compost or actually put uh, thingies in there. So that's that.